So in communication theory, we study group decision making, and one of the biggest truths to come out of that research is when you've got an important decision to make, you should never feel any confidence in your decision if you have not taken time and put in effort thinking about what are the potential negatives, what are the downsides to the option that you're closing in on. So I want to take just a couple of minutes and talk about three potential negatives to majoring in speech communication. Now I am going to talk a little bit about what balances them out, but you need to take them seriously because for a lot of people watching this video, majoring in speech communication is not the right choice for you and you need to make sure before you put tuition and years, months and years of your life into studying it only to realize you should have gone another way. So I would say that there are three major potential negatives to studying speech communication. And the first of them is that the career path is not very easy to predict. If you come to Northwest Christian and you major in accounting, then what you do after you graduate is pretty clear cut. You go for your CPA, you then look around at accounting firms or possibly corporations that are looking for people for their accounting department. And what you're gonna do from then on is pretty easy to plan for. If you major in teacher education, then they're going to lay all the foundation, take you right up to where you can be certified and licensed to teach, and then you know what you're going to do from then on. You've been prepared for a professional career. As I've talked about in some of these other videos, with speech communication, the path after you leave college is not nearly as clear. And sometimes when people have not really built up a record of achievement, when they have not really done anything that they could put on their resume and show to a potential boss, I could be a valuable addition to your organization. There are people who do, honestly, with a speech communication degree, have a very difficult time finding a job. Now, here's what I would say to counterbalance that. You really don't want to put too much stock in your ability to predict what's going to happen in your life. I mean, I've said that one of my advising tracks in speech communication is what I call the James 413 track, consisting of people who don't know what their career is going to be, and they put their faith in what James wrote in chapter 4 of his book, starting in verse 13, that people who boast about where they're going to go and what they're going to do are really just engaging in pride because they are not open to God's leading. So. If along the way, as you're majoring in speech communication, you're also doing things, taking on projects, getting involved, getting plugged into ministries, doing internships over the summer, and when it comes time for you to meet with someone who's interviewing you for a job, you can tell them exactly what you've done over the years, then that really shouldn't be that much of a problem. But it can be frightening, and it can lead to a feeling of profound insecurity when you don't really know where your career is going to begin or where it's going to take you. Now there's a second downside, and the second downside is if you major in communication, you're gonna take a lot of classes with me, and I am far from a perfect person. I would say that uh, there are a couple of influences that you should know about me up front. I am not from the West Coast, I'm from Texas, and in Texas we're friendly, but we're also kind of blunt. And my background, as I've mentioned in a couple of these other videos, what brought me into the communication field was I was a competitive debater and I was a debate coach. And that's also tended to make me very blunt. I have high expectations. I can be very hard to please. When I grade writing, I grade it line by line and I bleed all over it. And there are some people who the learning environments they've been in, they don't really respond well to someone who tries to light a fire under them. But these high expectations, I'm convinced, can help you out a lot. What I tell my students on a regular basis is I really I think I'm not doing the best job I can if you like me too much right now instead what I am aiming for is the you that you will be 20 years from now will look back and say I like what he did back then because it helped me grow into the successful person that I am today now I don't want you to get the wrong idea my classes tend to be pretty lighthearted places we tend to enjoy ourselves and what I like best is when the enjoyment comes from discovery, when the enjoyment is not necessarily just from cutting up, even though there are moments for that. There are times when cutting up and having a good time can actually make what we're learning more memorable, when it can clear the way to us seeing how to apply it best. But I take what I do in the classroom very seriously. I also should mention that for the past couple of years, I have been on a rampage against what I think of as playing school. And that's led to, on a few occasions, some heated conversations with a few of my majors. Because 
it's almost as though my perception is that they feel like they're living in a sitcom and they're one of those cute college students that you see in funny movies where, oh, I procrastinate and I do everything the night before and I always get a hundred on everything and procrastination's adorable and it's inevitable and it's what everybody does and all the real learning on campus happens outside the classroom so I'm just going to go through the motions when it comes to what I do in my enrolled classes. And really, I think that the culture, the organizational culture that we've tried to build up in the communication program here is one that sort of calls people out on that, says that's really not acceptable. You're telling yourself a lie and you're going to get into these habits and down the road these habits are going to be very tough to break. So one of the things I try to do in just about all my classes is raise the bar very high but also give people with a work ethic all the support they need to get over the bar. I will never want your success more than you want it and I will never put more effort and more labor into getting you to your diploma than you're willing to give but you'll find that I am willing to come alongside you and work awfully hard if there's something you're struggling with because you're capable of more than you think you are but not if you sell yourself short and not if you find mediocrity amusing. I don't find anything funny about mediocrity. I think that every person in my program can and should and must be excellent because anything else doesn't glorify the one who created you. The third and final potential downside that you want to keep in mind if you study communication is there are far too many people who get really kind of hippie and squishy and warm and fuzzy about communication. Communication's always good. More communication's always better. More openness is always better. More listening is always better when actually that's not the case. There are situations where listening can burn you out to where you're not available to help anyone because you committed too much of yourself to the person who was immediately in front of you. There are situations where disclosing too much can leave you vulnerable to people who do not have good motives, to people who want to take advantage of you. There are times when talking too much about a conflict can actually make the conflict worse. So if you're going to go into communication out of sort of a romantic notion that you love communication and you just want to spread more of it throughout the world, then I think you would find majoring in speech communication kind of frustrating. You might think about it like going to train to be an auto mechanic because you love cars. Well, you're not always going to work on really beautiful cars. You're going to have to open up some cars that are ugly, some cars that were poorly designed, some cars that have been poorly treated, and if that bothers you, then you're in the wrong line of work. So, take those things into account and think about them in a serious fashion. You don't know very much about what your actual career will be. You also are going to find me kind of hard to take at times. And you'll even find that communication has its own dark side. But if you think through all those things and it still seems like the right major for you, then you may have come upon something that's good for you.